Madam President. Senator from Colorado. Thanks, Madam President. First, I'd like to congratulate the senior senator from Texas for his leadership on this incredibly important issue uh, with Senator Warner, the senior senator from Virginia. Um, and it really is important that we get this passed. Our national security depends on it. I think the American economy depends on it. The, the senator mentioned that there was a time uh, in our country's history not long ago, I'm, I'm going to use my words, not his, but I'll, I'll paraphrase it, where I think we, we thought that making things as cheaply as possible was the same thing as making things as efficiently as possible. And there was, I would argue, we privileged the people in our economy that wanted to make stuff as cheaply as possible in China, when there are a lot of really other important values at work, including our national security, the supply chains that we rely on, making sure that communities in our country have uh, jobs and wages being created. I think we have an incredible opportunity as a nation to come together and build an economy that when it grows, grows for everybody uh, once again. And in my mind, that's what this bill represents. So I, I just want to say to the senator from Texas how grateful I am for his leadership, uh, and I hope that it won't be long before we pass it. Madam President, I'd ask that my, my, my next remarks appear um, uh, distinct from my previous in the record. Without objection. Thank you, Madam President. Eighty years ago this month, President Franklin Roosevelt signed Executive Order 9066, two months after the bombing of Pearl Harbor. And it led to some of the most disgraceful chapters in our nation's history the forced dispossession, relocation, and concentration of over 120,000 Japanese Americans during World War II. Two-thirds of them were citizens of this country, forced out of their homes and into internment camps by their own government. They were our neighbors, and they were parents and shopkeepers and students, doctors and factory workers. They were Americans in every sense of the word. But racist fear forced them into these camps, crowded, squalid, and at war with everything that we stand for as a nation. One of those camps was Amachi in Colorado, where nearly 10,000 Japanese Americans were detained against their will. This is a photo of that camp, Madam President. I'll mention just because I, I looked it up. I, I figured this might be true because we got senators from Nevada and Texas here. There were five such places in Texas as well, internment camps. Uh, but this is one that was in southeastern Colorado. And, and these children are among the first arrivals at Amachi. And they, they were forced to build the camp where their own families were interned for the duration of the war. I, I can't tell exactly the ages of the children in this photo, Madam President, but. I would be surprised if the pages on this floor uh, are any older than them, you know? And I'd say to the president in front of the pages to ask them to imagine a time when our country interred people, the age of the people that are pages on the floor of the United States Senate. I've had the opportunity to visit Amachi a few years ago with John Hopper, who's a high school teacher, a, a principal, uh, out there uh, near the camp, who along with his students created the Amachi Preservation Society. There wasn't anybody else to do it. It was just a high school teacher and, and his students. They recognized how, this, how much this site meant to Colorado, how much this site meant to the country, and acting completely on their own, they worked year after year after year to restore the site so that the next generation of Coloradans and Americans, the young people, sitting on this floor today would have the opportunity to learn about what happened here. If we're up to me, Madam President, every student in Colorado and throughout the American West, and for that matter, in our entire country, would come to this site and learn about the Americans of Amachi, the men and women who held onto hope year after year, who supported one another who forged a community behind the barbed wires of this site, who never gave up on the United States of America, even as it was interning them on their own soil. 
And if they did go to Amachi, they could learn about one of my heroes, Colorado's former governor, Ralph Carr, who spoke out against what was happening at a time when most politicians in the West and in this country, going all the way up to our president, Franklin Roosevelt, were either not speaking out or allowing this to happen. At that time, many Western governors opposed internment camps, not just because they were unjust, but out, I'm sorry, at that time, many Western governors were comfortable locking up their fellow citizens so long as they were locked up in someone else's state because there was an anti-American, a Jap Japanese-American prejudice in the land. And some Coloradans in nearby communities gave way to shameful fear of their fellow citizens and objected to their presence, to say the least, they objected to their presence. Speaking to an angry crowd one day on the Eastern Plains, I'll say to my colleague from Texas, this is where my colleague, Senator Cory Gardner, was from, this, this part of the state of Colorado. Governor Carr said, quote, I am talking to all American people, whether their status be white, brown, or black, when I say that if a majority may deprive a minority of its freedom, contrary to the terms of the Constitution today, then you as a, a minority may be subjected to the same ill will of the majority tomorrow. He went on, the Japanese are protected by the same constitution that protects us. An American citizen of Japanese descent has the same rights as any other citizen. If you harm them, he said, you must first harm me. He went on to lose his next election, I think it was to the United States Senate. And I shudder to think what would have happened if people like Governor Carr hadn't been there to stand for our highest ideals as a country, or if survivors and their descendants and community leaders, many of whom have close cl connections to Colorado to this day, who live in Colorado to this day, hadn't worked for decades to preserve the site and the memory of what happened there. And thanks to their work, we now have the opportunity to give Amachi the recognition and resources it deserves. That's why I introduced this bill, along with my colleague, Senator Hickenlooper, to make Amachi part of the national park system. This would ensure Amachi has the legal status and funding to preserve the site and the memory of what happened there for years to come. In the House, Congressman Ken Buck and Joe Neguse introduced the bill. Not everybody here would know that, but I know Senator or Congressman Buck would know that. He and I ran against each other in 09 and 10. That was a tough, tough, tough election. And I barely, barely won. I barely won. But I'm proud to serve with, with Congressman Buck in the House and Congressman Neguse in the House, who also have come together, just like me and Senator Hickenlooper, to, uh, to support this bill. This site is in Ken Buck's district in Prowers County. Ken won 74% of the vote there in 2020. Uh, by the way, I, I think I won 33% in 2016, so uh, Ken is outpacing me there. We don't agree on a lot, but we agree 100% that this matters to our state and the legacy we want to pass on to the next generation. I have a list of 65 groups that support this bill, the Asian Chamber of Commerce, the Colorado Council of Churches, the Colorado Municipal League, and if that weren't enough, the bill also has the support of the chairman and the ranking member of the Environment and Natural Resources Committee. But today, there's one senator out of 99, and it's not the senior senator from Texas who's objecting to this bill. This bill passed the House of Representatives with all but two votes. We have 99 senators on one side who supports this and one objecting. I have absolutely no idea why that one senator is objecting, and I hope that it's just uh, a, mis a misunderstanding of some kind. Um, we fight for a lot of things on this floor, but he, there's, there is a bipartisan tradition going back to Teddy Roosevelt of both parties coming together to protect places that matter to our heritage as a nation. Amachi matters, Madam President, to Colorado, and it matters to America. This is about whether we're going to ignore the worst parts of our history or lift them up and give 
future generations the opportunity to learn from them so that we can move this country closer to our highest ideals. So I hope that the senator who is objecting to this, um, uh, to this bipartisan bill with massive support in both the House and the Senate that's of critical importance to the state of Colorado that doesn't touch and concern any other state in the union except to the extent that people from those states of the union might someday like to come here and learn uh, an important episode uh, in our country's history. I feel strongly about this in part, Mr. Pres uh, Madam President, because my own mom and her family were dislocated by the same war. They were living on the other side of the world in Poland, and the entire family was killed except for an aunt and my grandparents and my mom, and, and she, she got here when she was 11 years old, the, probably the same age as the young children here who were picked up from their homes all across the Western United States and brought to a place uh, that they never had known before. And it seems to me the least we can do with this massive bipartisan support uh, is, to, is to pass this bill. So um, as if in legislative session, Madam President, I ask unanimous consent that the Senate proceed to the immediate consideration of calendar number 255 H.R. 2497. Further, the committee reported amendment be agreed to, the bill as amended be considered read a third time and passed, and that the motion to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table. Is there an objection? Madam President. Senator from Texas. Madam President, reserving the right to object due to the uh, winter storms that are shutting down airports around the country, Senator Lee, the senator from Utah, who, um, who objects to this uh, unanimous consent request, is not here. And I had the bad luck uh, to be here when he communicated to me his desire that I make an objection on his behalf. Uh, I would say to my friend from Colorado, I'm a non-combatant on this issue. Uh, I didn't hold his uh, bill. Uh, but I know Senator Lee does have an amendment I believe he wants to offer, and certainly he wants to be here to participate in the discussion and, and vote on the bill. So on his behalf, I object. Objection is heard. Uh, uh, may I, Madam senator President, from Colorado. I, I thank the senator from the senior senator from Texas, who in fact is a non-combatant uh, in this effort, and I, uh, I'm sorry that he's had the misfortune of having to come out here and object. I will say, uh, Madam President, that um, Colorado and Utah are right next to each other, and I face the same travel issues that the senator from Utah faces, I guess. I, ho I hope he gets where he's trying to go. But I stayed here this evening because, not because I objected to this, but because I thought it was so incredibly important for us to get this work done, and, and I want the the record to reflect that uh, I actually didn't name the senator who objected, but the senator from Texas did. My fervent hope is that we can work this out because um, really importantly, uh, we are having a, the anniversary of uh, Franklin Roosevelt's uh, decision to inter these young people um, uh, this month. And if we don't get this back to the House of Representatives, um, we may miss that anniversary and people in Colorado uh, would miss the chance to be able to uh, demonstrate that they have, um, that they're carrying this really important legacy forward. You know, when I think about my, my, my mom's experience, experiences here, the country that these young men and women are growing up in who are with us today, it, it just makes me think even more how important all of this is. And, and Madam President, I can't think of anybody. I would rather have had this discussion with them with you sitting in this chair. So with that, uh, Madam President, I yield the floor. And I would suggest the absence of a quorum. Clerk will call the roll. Ms. Baldwin.